that and using your periodontal curette to get down into that bone and look at that, um, you can see that marginal bone level there and then you can see it there superimposed over the root. And then you can see down uh, into and apical to that marginal bone where we, we need to clean. So we've just extracted that tooth, we've extended that flap rostral so that we can expose all that around that root. And so we'll clean all that all the way around, make sure that there's no granulation tissue down in there using our curettes. And another thing that I use that I don't know a lot of you uh, realize or that we've talked about before, but another thing that we use is a fine cylindrical diamond burr. If we've got enough room, which we would in this case, around that defect where we can get that cylindrical burr in without damaging the tooth, we'll take that cylindrical burr down in there and eliminate the, the uh, fine granulation tissue that exists after we use our curette. So we go down in there with our uh, curette and do the best we can and do that quickly and do that without really worrying too much about hemostasis. And then once we're at that point and it's, it's more difficult to get the, the little segments out, then we'll take a cylindrical diamond, which is um, a little wider than your cross-cut tapered fisher burr that you use, your 701L, a little wider in width. And it's also a little bit tapered to the tip, not much, uh, but there's a slight taper from the base to the tip. And we use that in there and that'll help considerably uh, to get you to the point where you've really got that cleaned out really well. And then once that's done, you can use, uh, as you For those of know, you who EDTA don't EDTA to um, get out the dentin mud, if you will, all the little sh dentin shavings that occur when we clean that because we're scraping the dentin and when we scrape the dentin, we're scraping that material down into those tubules. So EDTA is a <clears throat> inorganic solvent, so it will remove those little particles by dissolution that are in the tubules and we put that in there for four minutes and then we rinse that out and once we've done that then we can go in and put our bone graft in after we've flushed that and, and dried that area. So uh, with, with doing that process we're going to have hemorrhage in that area so we just mix literally just mix our bone graft with the hemorrhage there and form the graft with the with the blood